What's going on my reefing fam? March here, Frag Box TV. I'm really excited to do today's video. We just got in a new shipment of corals from Indonesia. What's up, Jonathan? And I'm gonna kind of walk you through and show you what it looks like to unpack a shipment and talk to you about it a little bit. Okay, well, well, well. As you can see here, this is one of our coral beds. It's pretty much empty, or at least for us, this is what I would consider empty. When we have corals in, you can't even see the black egg crate here because it's so packed with corals that it just consumes and occupies the entire tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and start unpacking these before I get started and show you what they look like. These ones are from Indonesia and they've been in transit for about two days now. So they left yesterday at 8 a.m. And this is kind of unusual actually, speaking about time right now, it's about 8 p.m. over here. So the flight for these corals landed at 3 p.m. I uh, had to go to the airport, and then what you do is clear customs. So you go to a customs officer, you present them your invoice and your CITES, which is very important. So all corals coming out of the ocean are protected and have to um, get regu they're regulated and you gotta show proper paperwork in order to import them. So you present your case, you pay your taxes, you hang around and wait for them to show up. It takes uh, quite a long time between the time that the flight lands until they're back at the store. I would say four to five hours is normal and then we've got to unpack it. And usually, usually the flights are landing like two, three o'clock in the morning. This is really unusual for me to be unpacking an order in the middle of the day. So if an order comes in, lands at two, I'm not back at the store until five or six a.m. and then got to pull an all-nighter. It's not that fun. So if you've ever thought about maybe doing this for a living or just curious on what it looks like, um, all-nighters are very, very common when it comes to importing corals. So if you ever see me march here in the store and my eyes are half shut and I'm looking for a coffee and I'm kind of out of it, it's possible that the night before I brought in a coral shipment and I'm running on virtually zero sleep. Okay, so let me show you what they look like. This is how they come. So this one, water is a little bit cloudy, but mostly LPS. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and we'll see what's inside this little baggie right here. Ha, huh. kind of sounds like drugs baggy. Anyways, let me show you what's inside this one. No, you do it, here. Yeah, you do it, you do it. Tia's gonna show us. Yeah, cut them open over the bucket. We want to get the water out. We don't introduce any of the water into our system. Ooh, goodies. It's kind of like Christmas oh. Day. What is it? Elegance. Da, 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 da. Elegance coral. Let's see how it looks. So, nice. Keep in mind, this has been in a bag for two days, more than two days now, 48 hours. And that actually, in my experience, looks quite good. Yeah, it looks fine. It looks, okay, it looks like crap right now. <laughs> but I can see there's no tissue coming off of it. Skeleton looks like it's in good shape. LPS generally, when they show up, look like this. They look like, kind of look like crap, but I can tell you that's a, that's a really good sign. And very shortly, it's gonna be open and I'll record it again to show you what that looks like. And this one here looks like a plate coral, so that's a good sign. Water's clear, it's not too hot, not too cold. When it's murky, I don't know if I'm gonna find any that are really murky or brown, but they kind of, maybe one or two will be like that and they kind of pooch the bed and, and get stressed out from the shipping. There's about 120 new large colonies here. They're gonna take me the next couple of hours to go one by one and unbag. So uh, I'll do another kind of recap at the end and show you what they look like. This is how our order sheet looks. So you can kind of see the different scientific names, the common names. So for example, the first one, Acropora, and then again, Acropora, Cataphilia, which is an, an elegance. This is very common for ordering, just like this. We don't really get to pick too much. Some suppliers will send us photos, but they do charge a premium. If you want to do what you see is what you get, you pay a lot more, but generally it's just a list of scientific names, maybe a size, so medium or large, and then maybe a color like neon green, red, whatever. But a lot of it is kind of like gambling. So we order off the list. We hope that they send us what we ordered. And then on top of that, we hope that they come in healthy, colorful, and looking good. All right, so I'm about halfway through the shipment, unbagging it, unboxing it. It's looking excellent. I have almost virtually no dead ones. They're looking, okay, so they don't look terribly good. Um, I know maybe for you, for the viewer, but from my experience, these are gonna look excellent. And if you've seen any of our other videos, what we normally do is the next day, or within a couple days, we'll do like, we got a new shipment video. You won't believe how nice these torches are gonna look. We got some nice Ganipora flower pot. The Zoas are already opening right out of the bag. Like imagine these have been in transit for two days. So if you're ever worried about ordering corals online, at least here in Canada, when we ship them, a lot of them are getting to you within under 24 hours. So these guys have been in a bag for two days and they're still looking pretty good. Um, some Blastomusa, some Acanthophilia. And as I'm unbagging them, I'm sort of 
pricing them out at the same time and also putting them in groups so that they don't hurt each other because corals have a sting so as you notice I'll put kind of like the torches together and then I'll put the plate corals all together because I know they're safe so having knowledge about coral warfare really comes in hand when doing something like this Hydnophora for example sorry not Hydnophora Galaxia Galaxia coral has quite a sting so I've given him a little bit more space and not really put anything around him in case he decides to send out some sweeper tentacles tonight and knock out one of the other corals but also I'm pricing them as I'm going to and that kind of comes with the years of experience knowing what to charge for a coral I can tell you that they've skyrocketed in the last couple of years and then again with COVID because of the cost of shipping so if I show you the invoice you know the corals are maybe four or five thousand US dollars every time we order corals just as a point of reference it's always in US dollars with every supplier that I've ever done business with uh, the shipping can easily be double that so corals five grand but the shipping ten thousand so that right now is really impacting the price of coral up here in Canada a decent sized coral colony is about a hundred bucks I think that works out to about 70 US for a nice favia or hammer or frog spawn I think in the US you guys are paying a lot more than we are the markets are just different you know long tentacle plate coral colony 70 us 75 bucks works out to about 100 canadian but it's different you know as soon as you cross a border city or store to store it can vary quite a bit they've gone up a lot like i said in recent years when i first started in the hobby every coral colony was 40 bucks and that's a retail price 40 canadian we're talking 30 35 us you'd walk into a store the one here locally was called north american fish breeders and it was any coral any size any species any color the guy's name is John who was running it he didn't care because corals were really really inexpensive back then nobody had fancy names there wasn't rainbow dynamite this that I can do a whole nother video talking about kind of the I don't know evolution of the hobby and the way I've seen it over the past 15 years but it was cool you walked in and you liked it you grabbed it it was 40 bucks and you took home a colony the industry's changed completely in terms of colonies everything's moved more towards fragging um, at least up here in Canada it has and quite quite a bit more expensive than what they used to be for example when I started a head of torch I could buy wholesale for ten dollars and I could sell them for 20 bucks all day long that is long long gone so up here torch heads are usually around a hundred dollars a head now so that's changed uh, dramatically I think I'll do another video if you guys like hit me up in the comments below let me know if you're interested uh, on a video about coral pricing and I can talk more about that the Acropora for example that we got on this order they were $50 US um, for the price of the coral so the coral is relatively inexpensive they're not really expensive it's the shipping and the fees the boxes we literally pay for that styrofoam box the, uh, as a store we pay for that we pay for the CITES we pay taxes we pay import fees we pay for import permits uh, the shipping there's all these little 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 things that add up so the price of the coral is actually relatively inexpensive it's all the additional stuff to move it across the continent as fast as you possibly can because they are perishable of course and that's reflected in the price of the coral but hit me up in, below in the comments if that's something you guys want to want to hear about I'm going to continue unboxing this and then I'll check back in closer to the end and give you kind of a recap on how the shipment looks okay all done unpacking overall really really happy with this order this is the first time ordering from this supplier for me this is a new one for us so when we're looking to order from new ones um, it's a little bit tricky because we're sending money overseas to foreign countries to people we haven't met in person and there's a lot of trust involved so I've been burned twice over the past whatever many years in business 12 13 14 years of business once was um, in the Philippines ordering fish so sent money and they just never showed up it was just a complete scam and then another time out of Vietnam sent some money ordered and I didn't get what I ordered so let's say I ordered green I got red if I ordered acro or whatever I got zoas it was just a complete disaster not a very good order but with this guy very very impressed with the packaging the collection of corals the selection the color overall health everything this is kind of cool to note this open brain over here came bone dry like the bag was punctured in some way there was no water in the bag and he looks remarkable so I think a lot of people sort of get nervous about having corals out of water when there's low tide sometimes these things will sit out of water for uh, many many hours so just to show you how resilient oh sorry got to get sidetracked one more time this over here really really cool because we don't get them very often these are the Christmas tree uh, worm rocks hey sorry about that my microphone died let me finish the video up I wanted to show you these Christmas tree uh, worm rocks if you've never seen them go ahead and Google them they're really cool it's these uh, literal like feather duster worms that live in synchronicity with Parides coral inside and then 
when you get close to them. Oh, you see how they close? They're really cool. These ones are mostly blue, really rare, and these are not going to last. They're going to fly off the shelves. Or I guess I can't say that. They're going to fly out of the aquariums. But I think that's about it for today's video. If you guys liked it, hit us up in the comments below and let us know. Give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you can go ahead and do that right now. Um, I can talk about corals all day, literally all day, without getting tired. I can teach you how to keep them, the do's and don'ts. But this is sort of, I guess, a behind the scenes, more industry-sided kind of video. And if you guys liked it, let me know because then I will do more videos like this, talking about stuff that goes on on the back end and more kind of, I guess, industry focus or less coral focus. But it's gonna be up to you to comment below because your feedback helps shape the content and gives me ideas for videos like this. But thank you very much for watching this episode of Fragbox TV.